You're tuning in to Feli's Fishbowl, a marketing podcast for the entrepreneur that wants to create a feel-good business model. On this show, you'll be given the permission slip you've been missing to make that change and start building the business you originally dreamed about. Stick around for solo and interview episodes talking all things content creation and marketing. Sound good to you? Let's dive in. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Felly's Fishbowl. Today, I am talking about the one and only platform that I recommend everybody uses when it comes to marketing their business. If you've been around for a minute, if you listen to this podcast, follow me on social media or on my email list, you've probably seen me talk about the fact that I don't believe in a one-size-fits-all strategy, whether that strategy is for your content, for your marketing, or for your business. I do not believe that everybody can or should market in the same way or run their business in the same way, especially if you are a woman, a feminine person, female body. It's just not possible (laughs) for you to maintain that 100% strict rigid strategy all the time. I don't know about you, but there is three to four days of the month, every single month that I sleep 10 hours. I'm sleeping like twice as much as I normally sleep, you know, and it's just so it just wouldn't be possible for me to go live every day or do a certain amount of DMs every single day because there's a day of every month that I'm just like, nah, can't look at my phone screen, can't stay awake, can't concentrate, like brain fog. It's just, it's just not enjoyable. And I find if you're forcing that rigid strategy on yourself, you get to that point where it's like, well, I missed one day, so I failed. Or I didn't do everything on my to-do list, so I failed. And that is such a dangerous energy to be in because when you start seeing everything that you're doing as failures you get to that point where you're like well, why am I even doing this it's funny because I actually had planned to record a podcast episode that was more of a motivational talk <laughs> for this week's episode I was literally going to talk about the philosophy I've held for the last two quarters of I guess the last half of 2022 and how that's really helped me see the success I've seen in the last four or five months. And then I was like, you know what? No, we need to talk about this because I had a call. I had a sales call last week for my agency, Feli Day VA. I was talking with my now client about a, about the content repurposing retainer and the content repurposing retainer contains blogs, emails, and social media captions. And So she came and was like, I don't really need blogs. I don't really need emails. Like, what do you think? And I'm okay. I'm flexible. I'm always going to be flexible with my business because that's just literally my personality as a person. But um, I am flexible with trading out blogs because not everybody runs a blog. As much as I believe blogs are super powerful, not everybody has a website. So it doesn't make sense to enforce that rule if you're not going to make the most of it. But when it comes to email, I do say, let's do emails. And we can always find a way to make emails work for you because there's so many types of emails you can send. We could write your weekly newsletter, but we could also just write a value add email that you send out on a different day than your weekly newsletter. Every single industry, it's not just us. It's not just entrepreneurs or service-based, product-based, e-com, retail, big businesses. Everybody is using email marketing, and it's for a reason. The main reason, the obvious reason, the reason you always hear on the internet is you own your email list. And it's true. You do own your email list, and that is a very powerful thing. I am walking proof as somebody who literally lost access to their Instagram account at the beginning of this year, and I was selling an Instagram marketing course at the time. I felt like such a fraud (laughs) to lose my Instagram account and sell an Instagram marketing program through email only. But you know what? I signed seven clients through email without an Instagram account. 
because I was consistent and I kept sending emails. So that's the obvious reason. You can lose your account at any moment. You actually own your email list. The technical reason I'm going to say is based on statistics. The average email open rate is anywhere from 15 to 25%. From what I've seen from my friends, from people in the email marketing program I'm in, is that entrepreneurs who are actively emailing their list have anywhere from a 30% to a 50% open rate. And I've even seen some entrepreneurs share that they have anywhere from like 70 to 80% open rate. The rate that your followers view your content at for Instagram, for example, is three to 5%. To put this into perspective, if you have 100 Instagram followers, three to five people are seeing your posts. And it's not necessarily that it's the same people seeing every single post. Three to five people are seeing your post. If you're emailing your email list and you have 100 people on your email list, 30 to 50 people are opening your email list. Deep breath, because that is insane amounts. So I know at any given point that with my email list of 400 people, at any given point, 300, sorry, at any given point, 3% of those people are ready to buy. That's about 10 to 15 people. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not doing the math in front of me, but I'm pretty sure. So 10 to 15 people are ready to buy at any given point from my email list of 400 people. And I average 100 to 150 people opening every email that I send. If out of those 150 people that open, there is 10 to 15 people ready to buy, and I only have three spots, I feel great about my emails because I know it's just a matter of math before someone buys. Of course, you have to like work on your messaging and refine your emails and make sure you're hitting the point, but there's different analytics you can look at. So that's the statistical reason. Sorry if you're not a numbers person, I'm very much numbers driven. And there's also just the simplicity of email, of why I recommend email to everyone, of why everyone can use email super simply, even if you're not a tech person. All email requires from you is written words. You don't have to format anything. You don't have to do graphics. You don't have to do crazy editing. There's no videos or cameras involved. It's just simple, write what you want to say. And I know people who use voice to text, literally speak aloud what they want to say and send the email. Add the link with a call to action and send your email. Email is the simplest thing and more on simplicity is all the automations you can set up with email. I'm not going to get too much into that because again, it's very technical, but basically you could sit down on the first of the month or the first week of the month and write four emails, one for each week of the month. Schedule them all to send at the time that you want on the day that you want and be done with your email marketing in less than one hour in the first week of the month. No other platform requires that minimal of effort without a team in place, of course. But so that is why I'm like sitting here. Everybody needs to use email. Everybody can see results from email. Everybody can make email their own really simply as well. We're going to go into that a little later, but I want to touch on my client who has recently been seeing amazing results from her email list. She is one of my VIP fish. We're actually ending next week, which I'm very sad about, but it's been beautiful to see the transformation over the last four months with her. The way it works with VIP fish is there's the way it works with VIP fish is there's three phases. We go through the foundations, we go through the platforms, and then we go through the experimenting and implementation. So with my fish, we sort out her product suite, her messaging, her ideal clients, and she knew from the start that she wanted to use email and Instagram and has kind of bounced back and forth with TikTok, but just a lot of repurposing to TikTok from the reel she creates for Instagram and it's working for her, you know? What works for you is what works. Um, and so the phase that we've been in probably for the last month has been 
refining the messaging, refining the content, and finding the strategy. I say strategy very loosely, but like finding the strategy that works for her. And so it's like, how many emails are you sending in a week? How many times are you posting to Instagram? What are you sharing on your stories? You know, and like getting clear on all of that, but also just like a lot of editing around the content that she's putting out, the wording that she's using to be able to speak clearly to the client. Lots of like nitty gritty details going into our back and forth right now. And so she sent this great email about two, a week ago, two weeks ago, basically saying like, this is why my service is for you. This is why my service might not be for you. And I responded to her email. I'm on all my clients email list. And I said, I want you to write individual emails for every point on this list of why the email, why the service is for you. And so she did it and she sent them to me and I reviewed them and we got into the details, edited them, and she's been sending the emails. And now in a matter of 48 hours, she's had five leads turn up in her inbox. One was from TikTok, two were from client referrals, but two of them were from her email list. One of them it's actually funny because one of them is somebody that is constantly saying, Oh, I need this. Oh, I want this and never committing. And so as we talked about this person, I said, write emails to them. Why have they said not yet? Why are they like, what's, what kind of business are they running? What kind of funnel do you plan to set up? What kind of funnel have you talked about setting up for her and writing emails specifically to that client who's on the fence right now. And you know what happened? The client on the fence, reached out and said, let's get on a call. And a second client also reached out and said, let's get on a call because she was probably in the exact same place as that other client. And you didn't even know it. They were just lurking in the emails. Amazing. I love email. My clients get results from email. I get results from email and email is in my opinion, one of the simplest marketing platforms to figure out. All you have to do is use a driving force whether that's a lead magnet or literally sharing, join my email list and then send emails. So I want us to touch on where you can start before we finish this episode, because I know this is a common struggle of everyone is like, well, I started my email list. I made a freebie. I got all these people. I never emailed them. Don't worry about it. Of course, when you send that first email after months, people are going to unsubscribe. I am notorious for unsubscribing from the people who show up on my list whenever they have a sale saying, hey, so I haven't messaged you in a minute. Unsubscribe, instant. I don't care. You're not on my, you're not on my list of emails I read. You could have gotten there, but because you weren't consistent, you didn't make the cut. Um, so if you have a list of people that you've never messaged or you've sent messages only at launches or, you know, one of those inconsistent emailers, don't worry about it. Ignore the unsubscribe rates as you start emailing. But what I recommend everyone is to have a weekly newsletter. I mentioned this before, you could write all four emails at the start of the month or even in advance and just schedule them out. And that is going to start you on being consistent. And once you gain the habit of sending that weekly newsletter, then you can bring in more emails and bring in like value add emails and bring in selling emails or like me who has like a podcast, announce the podcast every week or announce a blog post, whatever it is to your email list to drive that traffic. But with these newsletters, I want it to be a value focused newsletter around your area of expertise. So my weekly newsletter is called Marketing Miracles and it sends out every Wednesday. Um, please don't make fun of my Spanish accent. I've been told it's my Canadian accent's way too thick. But um, so every Wednesday I send an email and it's focused around marketing. And it's easy for me to send that email every single Wednesday because I can talk about marketing forever. I have a full podcast now all about content marketing. On my weekly newsletter, I will talk about content repurposing. I will talk about feel-good marketing strategies. I will talk about using PR as a marketing strategy. I will talk about podcast guesting and Instagram and email and whatever I feel inspired to talk about. Anything marketing related and my audience 
loves these emails. They're always value focused. I'm always delivering a mini lesson or a quick action plan that you can take away and implement or digest to use in your business. And yes, every single email, I include a sales link, either for my agency, if I'm talking omnipresence, content repurposing, content strategies, or I include a link to my one-on-one if I'm talking more general or alternative ways to market your business. And so even with just four emails a month, one weekly newsletter, you could still be making sales or you could already be making sales. And I want to stress this, do not worry about which email goes first. I remember when I started this podcast and I was like, how can I have the best first few episodes? Nobody listens to your podcast in order. It doesn't really matter which ones came out first, you know? And so it's the same thing with your email. People join your list at all different times. So it doesn't need to be in some sort of sequence to make the most sense and like follow on from in my previous email, we talked about this, you know, like people are joining at all times. And so you can talk about whatever you want at all times, as long as you're providing value. That is one giant long ramble as to why I stress the importance of email marketing, of using email for your business. If you have more questions around email, or if you want to talk about email marketing, I am always open. I love it. I preach it all the time (laughs) and I use it frequently. If you're not on my email list, you 100% should be. There's three ways I get people on my email list too. Like it's not just, it's not just a lead magnet. A, I invite people to join my list. Every time I'm about to send a marketing Nicolas email, I like to say, Hey, tomorrow I have a great email coming out. You need to get on the list, drop your email, people sign up. Or I have my service guide for Feli DVA. If you're interested in working with the agency, the service guide has all the details on our packages, what the workflow looks like, how to get started working with us, the link to apply to work with us. And so that also collects people's emails. And then I also have a lead magnet called, actually I have two lead magnets, but we're going to focus on the one today that's the most applicable. And I have a lead magnet called repurpose for email. And it's all about my repurposing strategy to email and how to get started with being consistent with your email through repurposing the content that you already have. Both of these will be linked in the show notes below. I look forward to hearing from you. And of course, if you love this episode, please don't forget to rate and review. It does so much to help me get seen by other people and help others find the show. And of course, if you share to Instagram or anywhere else, feel free to tag me at Felly's Fishbowl or at Felly Day VA or at Felly Day. Any of them work. My DMs are always open and I'm always happy to chat with all of you. And it means the world to me to hear from you about how you are enjoying the show because this is for you. It's not for me as much as I love to hear the sound of my own voice. But that's all for now. I will catch you all next week with another episode of Felly's Fishbowl.